Ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very, very excited for this podcast today. Joining me is Goose and Cronkite of Here to Chew Bubblegum. Greetings. We come in peace. Ah, yeah, man. <laughs> Good way to open it. For uh, the people that do not know, let me make sure we're not blasting people's eardrums out here right now. Uh, here to Chew Bubblegum is coming to one of my favorite stations here at Gearheart Media, WXLR 104.9 The X. When is all that going to be happening? And tell the folks exactly what they can expect with the new show here to Chew Bubblegum. Okay, we're going to be uh, premiering on Sunday, March 21st at uh, 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. And uh, on the first show, what we're going to talk about what? Uh, we're going to talk about some uh, Kentucky UFO yes. incidents. Yes, uh, we are. And basically, I guess just give some background on ourselves and how we got into yes. into the paranormal type stuff. Uh, paranormal UFO conspiracy. Time travel. Or time other travel. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's a, there's it's, a long <clears throat> list. <laughs> is it UFOs that you mainly cover on the show, or do you jump we, to other topics as well? We jump to other topics as well. You okay. know, and, and it might be... It, it might seem that we cover UFOs more, and that's because it is a, a, a large fascination for both of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, personally, out of all the stuff that we cover, I like the idea of the UFOs, you know, being real and looking into digging digging around more yeah. than I do, like you know, Bigfoot. You know what I mean? But but it doesn't mean that I won't do the research for Bigfoot. You know what I mean? We're, we'll still talk about Bigfoot, but so what made y'all want to start a whole podcast about your obsession of your fascination with obsession. UFOs? I like that <laughs> obsession. <laughs> I mean, y'all have done y'all's research. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, for me, it's just uh, it, you started it's, doing the news. Yeah, it was just something. It was kind of a stress release. It was uh, you know the world kind of sucks right now. So we yeah. were uh, you know he and I were talking one day after work, and it was just kind of like you know having this conversation. It was like, oh hey, by the way, I do this podcast. Do you want to? You want yeah, to come on board? He had no clue I was doing it, and at that point, I was doing it solo. I don't. I had only had like maybe three or four episodes, and uh, you know, I was tired of doing the news myself and stumbling through. And I'm like, "Hey, would you like to do the news and do this?" Yeah. He's like, "Yeah. What do you want me to report on?" I'm like, "Well, just go back, you know, and look up some UFO stuff, time travel, other dimensions." He's like, "Okay." So then it started from there, you know. Okay. And uh, what well, you did that what a couple of weeks. I came down with COVID. I was uh, put away and quarantined. And uh, so he did some stuff for me during that time. And once I was cleared and came back, he actually joined me in Bunker Studios. Nice. And uh, we uh, just, I mean, it was it was a, a, on a so much better level with me and him, just the chemistry between me and him, the way we would uh, play off and feed off each other. Yeah. You know. Well, it was more, more organic. You know, it's, it's better to talk to someone. Than mm-hmm. it is, you know, have two different recordings of two different people, then not not talking to anyone, just a recorder. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I get what you're it's just a lot more organic, and it just flows better. Yeah, I thought the same thing with doing like phone interviews and stuff like that. I yeah. hate it because yeah. it's just yeah. you, you don't have that personal touch that touch. you get with the real in life person. So, h- how long have you been like interested in the UFOs and no. uh, other theories and stuff like that? Has been like all your life, or is it more of a recent thing? For me, it's been my whole life. Yeah, ever I since I was like thirteen. Wow, I can't, I can't remember a time when I didn't look to the sky. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I guess it has been my whole life. What was the thing that got you both into UFOs? Was there a certain incident? There's, well, there's a man, correct? Mm. Uh, there is a man. Well, when I was thirteen, my dad turned me on to Art Bell, oh, and yeah. I yeah. was just fascinated with Art Bell. And he's also a fan of Art Bell. Mm-hmm. So our show, and I'm going to go ahead and say this, you may disagree, is a cheap imitation of Art Bell. Uh, a very we, cheap imitation. We, we pay homage and uh, tribute to Art Bell for starting this years ago, you know, and we hope that his legacy lives on through our show. Absolutely. You know? yeah. Well, I heard a saying one time. They said everything, like everything, is a remix of something, you know, and I think that. Uh, as history goes, that stuff will feed off into something else and may even be better than what it was previously, what it, whatever it learned off of. So who knows? You could be the next Art Bell with this whole thing. Because yeah. I've been listening to a lot of y'all's shows. It's really fascinating stuff that you talk about and a lot of stuff that I had no idea that it even happened. Uh, like 
uh, just a few days ago, I got to join y'all on yes. y'all's podcast, yes. and you were telling me about all these cons- Kentucky UFO uh, stories mm-hmm. that I had no idea were even a thing. For the people that want to check it out before it airs, where can they find y'all's show at? Uh, they can go to here to chew bubblegum.com, check out the website. Uh, we also, or <clears throat> you could search here to chew bubblegum uh, on uh, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube. Uh, it's it's pretty much anywhere you can get podcasts now. Um, uh, iHeartRadio, Apple, um, Spotify. You know, those are the yeah. big ones. Spotify. Yeah. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so, so many platforms nowadays. Sure. It is yeah. hard to remember all of them. But I mean, it really is fascinating stuff. So, when is Here to Chew Bubblegum going to be premiering on WXLR and what time? Uh, Sunday, March 21st at 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. See, first show. I love that y'all are doing it late at night, too. Because, oh, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Art, Art Bell, that's what he done, yes. right? When, when yes. did he start his? Like, he, oh, he, he, like he was going for a few. Like, so, but I mean, like, what know. time at night? Oh, his was like at midnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, so, that's what I was yeah. thinking. And he would go for hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he went to like midnight to like three in the morning. Yeah, that's so. crazy. But I mean, I think that's the time to like really be diving into stuff like that is whenever it's dark and, well, and, and your mind can wander. You think about it, that's the best. That's the best time to do the show. Because yeah. I mean, if, if you're out, if you're outside listening to the show and you're seeing, you're watching the sky. I was like, oh, yeah. I'll call in. Hey, oh, there's a there's a light in the sky. You know, and then it's <laughs> yeah. you're talking to someone who's actually watching it, but it's on the radio. It's that's the best time to be to be a part of that. It, it, it really is awesome, and I think that uh, people out there are really going to enjoy it, and it's awesome, man. It's going to be awesome to kind of have y'all on the team here. Well, very, thank you very, very much. Very excited. And yeah, we are, and, and we hope people enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So now that we got all the important stuff out of the way, folks, forewarning, we are going to dive deep today. <laughs> all right, I want to get deep into these. I, I don't like to call them conspiracy theories because we were talking before air. You know, there's so many conspiracy theories that over time turn out to be true. So really, I, I don't know what you would call these things, but it's it's not technically a theory because sometimes it's proven to be fact. So it's really just, I guess, a fancy guessing game at yep. this point. But uh, we were talking about Bob Lazar on y'all's podcast yeah, on the Sunday. other day. <clears throat> and uh, here recently, that's the guy that it seems to be like everybody looks to for the answers. You know, he kind of sparked up the whole UFO thing again, even though he's been talking about it since the 80s with the whole Netflix documentary and Joe Rogan podcast right. and everything. People have just been really into it. And I know that people would love to hear us talk about it. And we didn't get to dive uh, as far as I wanted to the other day, so I wanted to jump into that first thing. Whenever it comes to Bob Lazar, is he somebody that y'all believe, or is there some holes in a story that y'all I'm see? One hundred percent believe uh, Bob. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on board with Bob. What, what makes what makes you think? Just, I mean, <clears throat> when he came out in 1989 and he was saying all this stuff um, about the hand scanners that he would have to use, okay, and then the technology uh, came on you know, on a known basis years later. Mm -hmm. And he talked about element Element 115 and people were, were laughing and making fun of him, but then it was added to the element table. Element 115. Wasn't like 2011? Yes. Yes. Something like that. And and it was just as he described, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, based on those two facts right there. Yeah. Well, well, (laughs) well, what what really gets me, see, uh, I'm a really big skeptic whenever it comes to UFOs. I want to believe so bad but i just think that there's a lot of people out there unfortunately that are full of it and just want their 15 minutes of fame and with some people you can kind of see that they're lying like i I don't know it's just i like to think that i can i'm good at reading people yeah but with bob it just you don't see it like if he's a liar then he's the best damn liar that i've ever seen in my entire life his story has been Point to point, he's never messed anything up about it since the 80s. Yeah. I mean, that that's 30 years going on now yeah. that he's been telling the same story sure. with a, a lot of times if somebody's lying about something, after a while they're, they'll start getting their facts wrong or sure. tell another version. Exactly, exactly. With Bob, you haven't got anything like mm-hmm. that. <clears throat> and well, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. But uh, what was fascinating to me is uh, how they almost tried to rewipe 
this guy's history. Well, that, that's what I was going to say. That that's that's another reason that I think that um, that he's telling us the truth. I mean, they can't they can't just come straight out and kill him. I mean, they, you know, yeah. I mean, the government's not going to kill him because the, the well, public I, has seen his face. They I think know. they would have if they if he didn't go on to uh, that guy's TV station yeah. there yeah. in Las Vegas. Exactly. They might just have absolutely. So, what's the next best thing? Discredit him, and discredit him. They tried. They have. Wiped his entire education history gone. He, he didn't graduate from anywhere. He didn't go anywhere. He pretty much just appeared in life. Yeah. Uh, and then you have um, the fact that his um, nuclear hardware store is uh, it is not on a hardware <laughs> store is uh, is is raided quite frequently when he Very talks frequently. when he talks about uh, L one fifteen. Um, I one hundred percent believe that he's telling the truth. I believe that. The government knows he's telling the truth, and they're that's they're keeping very very close tabs on him. See, see, one uh, whenever it comes to wiping out his history, a lot of people would already jump on that and say, "Well, there's the proof right there." They would have to have records if he really did. Well, uh, and people can go watch the documentary that <clears throat> they released on Netflix, and even the podcast that Joe Rogan done, but. Some of the facts that they'll find in that is uh, whenever he's talking about how he worked at Los Alamos, the uh, what was it a uh, it was like a national security lab, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Very, it was very important lab that worked on weapon development, and uh, he said that he worked at Los Alamos. At Los Alamos never had any record of him apparently, but his name was still on the manifest there. Yes. At Los Alamos. Yes. So how do you not work there and your name is on the manifest, exactly. but they don't have any records of you? And uh, then there was a uh, another school that they said that he went to that didn't have any record of him. But MIT. then there was the, the uh, newspaper article. Was MIT. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, they had the newspaper article that had his name on the students at this school yeah. that graduated. So, I mean— yeah, that they they got the proof right there, and that's the only two incidences that I'm aware of that uh, they've been able to prove his education background. Yet you can't find any record of it. Well, so that's, that's really weird. Yes. Yeah. Let, let me ask you a question. Now, we're talking about wiping people's history. Um, do you think it's harder to do it in the '80s, or do you think it'll be harder to do it now with everyone with social it, media? It'd be a lot harder. It would have been, been harder, harder to do it now. It'd yeah. be harder now. Yeah. See, see, that's why I even think that you have Every, so many cases popping up. Everything is linked, and networks and, and things. I mean, wouldn't it be easier now than it would? Yeah, end? but you know, you've got social media, so many social media platforms. Yeah, you know, it would be so hard to yeah. to do mm. that now. Yeah, that that's to, in my opinion, and we'll jump into this um, as the podcast goes along. But I think that that's why the Pentagon last year had to come out and Just verify strong, yeah. those videos yeah. because they were and, everywhere on the internet. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the internet has been an unstoppable force for whenever it comes to so called conspiracy theories because Definitely. there's all types of information now that people can find out. Like even the CIA releases stuff every now and then. They don't tell you a lot. But they'll release some mm -hmm. interesting documents on their website sometimes, and it's oh, all because sure. of the internet. But but whenever it comes to Bob Lazar, see, I, I'm right there with y'all. Like, I think that he's telling the truth because there's how. First off, like, how did he know about the test flights? You know, for the people that are unaware of Bob Lazar's story, he and a few friends, I forget how many times they went out there, but a few times he brought them to uh, basically right beside what is now Area 51. And there was no Area 51 before Bob Lazar, right. which is another right. cool fun fact. He's the one that brought all the attention to that. But uh, he would show all these test flights that they'd be doing, and that's how he got busted and yada yada. How do you know about the time and the day of certain test flights at a top-secret base that nobody even knew about at the time? Exactly. It's weird. It's yeah. very weird, very weird. <clears throat> I think Bob, you know, he's 100% telling the truth. There's just been too many things that he said in 1989 that have came to pass. Yeah. You know, even you you were talking about the uh, videos that, that the U.S. government put out last well, April. It was in April, yeah. And mm -hmm. one of those was just like Bob Lazar uh, described and drew a picture of in that documentary. The rotating mm -hmm. one? Yes. Yes. So, you know, I mean, there's just so... And not to I mean let me see where I'm going here. When they put those out, it seemed like a lot of people didn't really pay attention. Or they didn't 
really care. And we've talked about this on our show. That could have been uh, disclosure for the U.S. government. But nobody, not, nobody, nobody cared. I mean, it was they could people could not have cared less about it at the time. And it's it's crazy to me. I mean, yeah. COVID was, was yeah, gearing up but, at that yeah. time and it may have been a distraction, but I don't think so. I mean, you put out we've been we've been craving disclosure for decades and all of a sudden they're like, Oh hey, here's three videos. Here's three videos that did actually happen and they're not from here. Yeah. And people well, are just like, <clears throat> Meh. Well, see that that's the thing that uh really gets me about whenever it comes to UFOs and stuff. And that was another question I wanted to ask y'all. Whenever it comes to Bob Lazar and the uh, supposed craft that he worked on do you think that is otherworldly or is there a possibility that it might just be top secret military stuff that really smart humans have engineered i think you uh that's a good question um i think it was otherworldly uh yeah i mean i think i think there was an otherworldly craft at that facility yes for sure um but i also think that there was reverse engineered human right. crafts there as right. well you, you know, know and when we've talked on the show i think a lot of sightings today could be uh ufo crafts that are man-made mm-hmm. that you know we have got that technology and we have uh reversed engineered it and mm-hmm. that's what people are seeing mm-hmm. there was two big crashes you know roswell obviously and then uh, the uh, dark forest crash was what in the late mm-hmm. 1930s yeah 36 in, uh, nazi germany Mm-hmm. And you know they supposedly recovered a craft there. Was that the acorn looking one? Was no, no, was that, no. Okay. that this this one, uh, the acorn one came after this. Okay. The problem the problem is I don't really think there was ever a description of that craft, and the reason because this is right around the time that you know Nazi Germany is coming to power and they're controlling a lot of information coming out that that the public can't have that. That the world can't see, you know, they're they're putting a lockdown on a lot of media outlets, so you can't. Mm-hmm. Th- there's not a lot to, to go on as far as anything on the Black Forest incident. Yeah, and, and see, that's the, that's one thing that's always bugged me whenever it comes to UFOs is just the lack of information mm-hmm. and the lack of just facts to even prove it. That's why whenever it comes to Bob Lazar's story, I want to believe him. So bad because it seems like that's going to be our only hope to somebody getting that close to whatever that is and actually living to be able to tell us about it. Definitely. I I just, I want to believe them so bad, but who knows? And also just the whole alien, whenever it comes to my thoughts about aliens, I want to believe they exist so bad, but just the whole laws of science it's maybe they're a much more advanced race okay here's a good topic wasn't it one of the ufos that they supposedly discovered at s4 where bob Lazar worked at wasn't that an archaeological find that's a good i I, I, I think i'm pretty sure it was so here's one theory that i've tossed around in my head because i want to believe in aliens so bad i just don't know if that's what it would be because if they're reverse reverse engineering some of these crafts that were supposedly archaeological whether they dug up or an iceberg however they got these things would there be a possibility of an advanced human race before our time way before our time a global catastrophe happens sends everybody back into the stone age and we find these crafts that we think is otherworldly, but it might have just been smart humans 100,000 years ago that made these theory. ships. Yeah, well, I mean, I've always kind of kind of thought that, which if you watch the show Ancient Aliens, the, they, they're they all over that 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 kind of stuff. I mean, they, oh, they, they, go. they look yeah. at hieroglyphs and, and things like that, and, and they start looking, what do you mean, here we go? I'm just joking. Why don't you <laughs> pop down over there and let me do my talking? You just relax. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Ah, you see what I deal with? Boar Central. Uh, Boar Central. Ancient Aliens. Just watch Ancient Aliens. I'm done talking. Well, well the, the History Channel, though, I've wanted to believe them people on there so bad, but it seems like the last few years, it's on, instead of click bait, it's click watch. Yeah. Right. They yeah. throw so much BS at you. 
Like, uh, for example, I, I got really into uh, ancient history there for a few months uh, last year. And this guy was supposedly there was these Freemason markings on this rock in Rhode Island, I think it was, that dated back to the 1400s, meaning that somebody was here 200 years before Columbus and all that. So, But then they go there to uh, look at this rock, and somebody supposedly stole it, and they don't know where it's at. You you go to the YouTube comments, and somebody's like, it's at a museum 20 miles down the road. Like It's it's not not hard to find. But they done that in the show just to get some type of wow factor. uh, That show was was on the guy's property, and it was by a stream or river, the rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw that episode. (laughs) There's just a lot of BS on the History Channel nowadays, and that's why, to be honest, I've uh, looked to people like Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. I mean, it's it's crazy that those are the two people that you have to trust nowadays with uh, (laughs) information, like with information. Yeah, you know, and we've 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 even talked about that on the show. Yeah, you know, and it goes back to uh, we were talking about what was it like a. The government, uh, the FBI, CIA, all the all the major branches, uh, they have a section that helps Hollywood make oh, movies. Oh yeah, and we talked about this, you know, and th- they have that section uh, to kind of control what Hollywood puts out there. Yeah, of course. So to speak. Now, if you go on uh, and dig a little bit deeper, and this goes to the Men in Black movie. Great movie, by the way. Oh mm-hmm. yes, yes it is. The like New York Times, the you know the the Post, all your major media outlets are controlled by the government. The ones, the smaller ones, like the Globe, and you know that do some of the far fetched stories. Some of those, I'm not saying all of them. Some of those could be 100 percent real. You never you know? know. Very true. To me, it makes sense that we are genetically altered creatures on this earth. We are vastly different than everything else on this planet. Some stuff are very similar. You know, um, a mongoose and a dog all walk on four legs. Um, Cats and squirrels have tails. I mean, there's animals that are a lot like other animals Mm -hmm. with how they behave, with how they act, with how they look, their body, uh, how it's made. It's very similar. Humans... No, there's nothing close to even being like us. So the theory that we're genetically altered creatures, it might be there might be something there. Whenever you start looking at ancient cultures such as the uh, Mayans and the Egyptians and the Polynesians, I mean, really ancient cultures thousands of years ago, they have talks about sky people coming and visiting and showing them information Mm -hmm. and progressing them as a society, who's to say that that still isn't going on nowadays? And that may explain the UFO phenomenon. That may explain why we're so different than everything else. I don't know is I can see some truth to that because the science it's there and it makes sense. I can see us doing something like that. If we found an Earth like planet, I can see us sending Jersey Shore to it <laughs> and, and, and making it a TV show and just watching for entertainment. That might be what they do with us. They watch us for entertainment. Well, that's and, incredibly depressing. Well, you had the theory of what we <laughs> that we're just entertaining. You had the theory we were their pets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and that may be very true, too, because one thing also. <clears throat> That uh, gets me whenever it comes to UFOs. I want to believe aliens exist. I'm not saying that they do. To be honest, to me, it's more likely that there's just top secret UFO. I mean, there's top secret government programs and uh, aerial craft that they just don't want us to know about. But it's a really big coincidence that you had all of this UFO phenomenon going on in the 40s. Whenever it's World War II going on, we dropped the nuclear Nukes. bombs. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. Maybe whoever made us, or whatever it is, came down and said, okay, these, these, peop- these humans are getting a little bit crafty. They figured out nukes. Let's go down there and kind of calm Some them down. Move. Wasn't it uh, the, the Nazi thing that uh, one of you just mentioned? Is that the one where they uh, flew over the base 
base and uh, shut down the nuke no, technology. Do you know yeah. what story no, I'm talking about? Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. the that's the Minuteman um, missile silos, and they're in the um, the north. I don't say North Dakota, Minnesota area, uh, but yeah, there was a uh, a UFO that um, it was a sighting, and they sh- they it initially began the launch sequence for the nuke, and then it shut everything down. And then nothing happened. Then they it was just pretty much scrap metal at that point. <laughs> you know wow. what I mean? So, uh, but it, yeah, that's a fascinating story. If you if yeah. ch- t- take a look at that for sure. See that that's what really that's what gets me thinking because I like to think logical and scientifically, and that it may just be top secret government stuff going on. But you have stories like Bob Lazar. You have stories like that, and just the coincidence that all of this started happening. In the '40s, whenever all all that craziness was going on, well, it's just, to your point, you make a you make a good point. Um, Ronald Reagan, when was he allegedly abducted? Uh, the first time I think it was in the late '60s. But then it was like in the uh, '70s, then, then and like '72. Wait, Ronald so, Reagan? Yeah, yeah, he was abducted. Yeah, yeah him and Nancy. I never heard so, about that. Yeah, the '70s and the '80s were at the height of the Cold War, and there was a lot of UFO activity around then as well. It, that makes sense to your point. That's a, that's a good thought. I, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Well, like in the late '60s, Ronald Reagan was on a plane and saw a UFO. Him and a pilot, and then like, I think it might have been '72. Him and Nancy were going to a uh, charity benefit, and they saw some lights in the sky. And then they are like an hour and a half, two hours late to the party, and wow. they're telling people what happened. And then they realize, you know, that time was missing. See, and there's a lot of cases like that. There's always the time missing in the stories. You know, and there's, you know, in the Reagan Diaries, we've talked about this mm-hmm. on the show. Yeah, that's a whole you know, episode. We and like that. 1985, he put in his diary that he had just saw a craft that the U.S. had control of or manufactured or made. But he saw a craft that could seat 300 people and in orbit. Who's the one? That, who's the guy that said this? Ronald Reagan. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can look that up. It's like in July. <clears throat> yeah, in his personal diary. 1985, that was in his personal diary. See, to me, that explains something like the Arizona Lights. For the people that are unaware with that, I think that was 1997? 97, yeah. Yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Uh, I forget how many lights it was, but they were in a V-shape that came above uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Thousands of people have seen it, including the governor. And I love the governor's story because for the people that don't know about this dude, I even uh, got some facts here to uh, not make myself sound as <laughs> dumb. But, uh, okay, here it is. So, apparently, he was uh, he was about to be arrested, sent to prison. Do, 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 do. There it is. Okay. Clay Smith on YouTube. <laughs> he wrote this. This was really the beginning of the unraveling of the mass media news. Anyone who did any research was convinced that the Phoenix Lights were otherworldly. The media spent several years discrediting the Phoenix Lights when the governor's... Oh, no, it doesn't say that. No. Anyways... I can't find it right now. People can do the research. <laughs> but, but, uh, there you go. But apparently he was uh, under criminal investigation for something. I forget exactly what it was. And uh, Now was he under investigation after? No, well, so uh, for the people that are unaware of the story, and I'm sorry for butchering this and making it sound dumb, but uh, he was under criminal investigation for something. He goes out there and does the press conference the next day after the Phoenix Lights, tells everybody that they were just flares, that's all it was, and kind of like was joking about the people that were taking it serious, like making jokes about them and uh, basically making people feel crazy for saying that it was a UFO. Well, after he does all these press conferences and kind of pushes stuff under the rug, you never heard anything about the criminal investigation. All that just seemed to have went away (laughs) somehow. Well, uh, 10 years later... After his term of being governor is done, and he's just a normal, everyday person like we are, he comes out and says that, no, that was a UFO, that he did, in fact, see some type of huge V-shaped aircraft moving very slowly in a very slow pace over Phoenix. And uh, him and his son supposedly went out there and drove around and looked at it. So even he said that 10 years later, after he's done being governor, that it was, in fact, a UFO, some type of 
V-shaped craft hovering slowly. And the thing about Ronald Reagan saying that they have this craft that can seat 300, 300 people, people, to me, something like that makes sense. Sure. <clears throat> because yeah. also, somebody uh, brought up this point to me. Because, man, I used to really be all in. I, I would get really crazy whenever it came to some theories, a little bit too wild. But somebody said to me some, one day, they said, you know, these, these are aliens that can visit from different galaxy, light year speed, probably going through different dimensions, wormholes, whatever. Why do they need lights at night when they drive? Why, why is that a thing, you know? And I, I got to thinking, like, okay, that does kind of make sense. And whenever I hear something about Ronald Reagan talking about that, that would explain that theory as well. But, I mean, it's still a guessing game because mm-hmm. you still don't know that for a fact. You can say what makes sense to you in this world, but the more you find out about the whole universe, the less it really makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, the uh, triangle shape, is it the TR-8? Is that what they the say? TR-3. 3B, I think. TR 3B. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's similar to the stealth bomber, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, there was recently a sighting that somebody posted on Facebook, uh, live as it was happening in New York City. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you saw that too, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and it was, it, the the thing about that one is it's it wasn't moving quick like an aircraft. No, was. no, it, it was, wasn't moving it quick. It was almost but, at a dead hover, but then it banked all yeah, of the, but, the lights yeah. and uniform banked. But the pattern of the ship. Oh, it's, yes, it's yes. similar to stuff that we think is you as a UF man made UFOs that we made here mm-hmm. that were made here on Earth based on you know a design possibly from Roswell. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of technology that came after Roswell. You had uh, high speed fiber optic cables, you had uh, Kevlar, you know, there was just so mm-hmm. many, and those were just mm-hmm. two off the top of my head. But see, see, I like to, uh, and, and this is me just trying to be rational, and I can be dead wrong about all of this. You, had, you also had the big inventions of the telephone, and I, I come from a big military background, and uh, I have family members that have worked in weapon development and stuff, and there's certain patents that will be on certain things that won't be released to the public for sometimes decades. Right. At the time, I mean, uh, I think super glue was invented back in World War One or World War Two to help soldiers out in the field. You didn't see that until a few decades later out in normal stores, but they've been using it for uh, for years, you know. So if you have something like the Internet, who knows how long they've been using that for and how we know nowadays how easy it is to pass along information. I think the invention of the Internet really propelled technology it, to what it is today. Sure. I don't know if it's necessarily alien technology. I'd love to think it is. But just whenever it comes to the internet, to me, that would almost make sense for why we are as advanced as we are today. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Well, and the internet actually started as a military project exactly. well, in, the, so, yeah. in the 50s, I think. See, so, and, so. and, and to me, and that's what they say. You know, I don't trust yeah. them for a second when... who. Because uh, <clears throat> the government is made of really, 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 really smart people. There are people out there that are way smarter than all three of us put together. And the government probably has thousands of those people. You put people like that all in the same room, who knows what you are going to get out of that. And the propel, just how, because that was like one thing that I used to think about back in the day, too, is why are we so advanced? But who knows what the government has been doing all this time just to pass along information to each other. And we're also like, we're kind of like one of the dumb countries. We still, we still everybody's other smart people, you know? So who knows what they were doing? We are a nation of immigrants and that's how we do it. Yep. Bring them all in. But what I will say is this, um, in world war one and world war two, or especially around world war two, the, the technology explosion, if you will, is, remarkable Mm -hmm. and to simply think that someone sitting in a lab thought up anti-gravity flying saucer when they were still making rockets and jet engines makes no sense to me it has to be some outside help from 
it, it wasn't just humans. They had I, to get the idea. I, from yeah, somewhere. they had to get the idea from somewhere. Yeah, and I, that I, I full well believe. It. Now, whether it's a time traveler or what, because you know there is a theory out there that the the UFOs we see are time traveling humans from our distant future. But you know, I don't, I don't know how plausible that would be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The UFO thing sounds kind of kind of strange until you think about how big the universe is and how many Planets. billions and Stars. billions of years old this planet is and you can imagine you are billions and billions of years that's old. Right. we are all stardust yeah very fact very yeah. fact but, big facts so yeah always thought of you as stardust mm-hmm. but what okay like so it. i mean we, we just don't know what's going to happen within the next 100 years that's why it's almost impossible for us to wrap our minds around some of the weird things that go on in this world and try to make sense of them because we are still very ignorant I mean, imagine if you were to go back in time and grab Christopher Columbus, bring him to today, and put him in a B-52 bomber or something like that. He would think that it's an alien spacecraft. It, he wouldn't be able to wrap his mind around it. Sure. So I, I know that the whole time traveling thing sounds very weird to people out there, but who knows what they'll have in 300 years. Yeah. I mean, hell, we went to the moon in 1969 we haven't even been a full hundred years since then Mm -hmm. and we're already talking about uh they're gonna have this one uh kind of drone like thing on mars and that's going to be the first thing to fly around another planet it's pretty wild yeah Yeah, you have to ask his theory on drones he thinks birds are drones no, I do not. Yes, who, who knows? Do. No, who knows? I, I really don't. And he thinks that they land I'm, on power I, lines I'm, to recharge themselves. I'm going to clear this up. I very much do not think that. <laughs> yes, yes, he does, ladies and gentlemen. Well, well, the thing is, man, whenever it comes to surveillance from the government, they've got us. Like, anybody who tries to go off the grid, good luck with that. It's almost yeah. impossible nowadays. They've got yeah. you hook, line, and sinker. They, they don't need that's funny, like when people's like, "Oh, don't get the vaccine." Bill Gates going to put a put put a tracking device in you. They don't need to put a tracking device in you, dummy. They've got it right here. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. right here. They know exactly where you at. It, like I used to have Snapchat, and Snapchat would like show you uh, the emojis of people and where they were mm-hmm. on the world. I could track people just from Snapchat. Imagine what the government can do. Absolutely. So who well, knows? you have a you have a credit card, don't you? Exactly. There's a chip in it. Exactly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, literally any... Any... You have one? Yeah. You want to share that number? I don't. <laughs> okay. But, well, one thing that got a lot of people talking, though, and we mentioned this earlier, was uh, last year whenever the Pentagon released three videos that were supposedly unidentified flying objects. The one guy that said uh, they were otherworldly apparently came out afterwards and said, no, he didn't say anything like that. So, I mean, and... <sighs> If somebody would have had it on paper or video of it, that'd be good. But we just have to take his word on it now. Right. But we do know that the videos are real and that the government supposedly doesn't know what they are. What do you think about the three videos that were released last year? Also, it came around 420, too. So that might be why yeah. everybody <laughs> forgot about it. I mean, it was April. So uh, true. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? They, there might have been some good planning right there. <laughs> they probably teamed up with Snoop Dogg. Like, when would be a good time to release this when everybody forgets about it and won't remember it? 420. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you all think about those three videos? I think though? it was advanced technology. Um, I think that it is possible. It was from uh, another world, but it's also at the same time very possible it's man-made UFOs. See, I think that it's man-made, and it's because of something that one of you mentioned earlier, going back to Bob Lazar. To me, that guy's just, like I said earlier, if he is a liar, then he is the best liar I've ever seen in my entire life. But And like y- y'all said too, some of the stuff that he mentions eventually comes to be true and one thing that he said in that documentary was that the craft rotated Mm -hmm. and in one of those videos you will see the craft rotating so uh, and like you said it may may be like man operated we may have just finally figured that out or who knows it's just kind of crazy where he says that rotating craft and that one that one that one's rotating and it's clearly rotating in the video very good video we have several people that you know, don't want to come on the show. They don't want us to tell us their names. Uh, they do have inside uh, info mm-hmm. through uh, armed forces, and we have several. 
and we can email them questions, and they'll answer them. And we've read some of these on the show. Mm-hmm. And one of them, uh, the person said, "Whatever the gov- whatever you can imagine, the government has." Wow. So, and, 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 you know, and that makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I mean, like I really do believe it because, as we were saying earlier, uh, how they have certain patents on certain technology that is not available to the public for decades at a time. Here we are in 2021 with the entire world in the palm of our hands. Mm-hmm. Imagine what they're working with. Who knows? Yeah, it's yeah. almost impossible to wrap you know, your mind around. And you had the Navy that recently patented some, uh, and you can describe them as UFOs. You know, uh, through Doctor Pace. P-A-I-S uh, designs. Uh, I know what you're some, talking about. Yeah. I, I'm too dumb to remember, like, uh, exactly the wording on yeah. those. I'll try to look into it. I'll find it real quick. You know. Yes, please do. Go right ahead. Oh, you've been dying to play with your cell phone. You want to, you want to touch your <laughs> microphone, too? I don't. I but don't uh, need to. For those of you that what? don't I listen to the it. show. Uh, see? Oh, Gover- well, there government shut us down. I wasn't spelling patents right. I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is from Forbes, so you know it's yeah. trustable. Oh, they even have a picture of the rotating craft yeah. on there as yeah. well. So, Good touch you know, there, Forbes. I mean, if if stuff like this wasn't possible, okay. why would our government spend money on it? And they spend quite a bit. Yes. You know, it, if, and, and, and also, like, that's not even, like, what we don't know about because there's some funds that go to a, uh, what do they call it, the black sector? Yeah. Or something yeah. where they just won't tell you what it's, what it's for. What it's for. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, but, I mean, if, if, if stuff like this wasn't possible, why would they spend money on it, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, they were working with time travel and stuff like that when Einstein was yeah. around. And was it the uh, Philadelphia Project? Yes. They something weird happened yeah. there. Philadelphia I'm, experiment. You know yeah. a lot about that, don't you? The Philadelphia experiment. I wouldn't say I know a lot about it, but I do. I do like reading anything I can find about it. Yes. So, so what do you think happened there? I think that was a uh, time traveling incident. I you really, think they actually pulled it off? I do. I do. I believe that Wait, was a time traveling incident. It went wrong because you had some people that was fused to the ship. That yeah, I, part of the ship. Yes, I, th- I think it was very wrong. What's um, now the Philadelphia experiment? Um, and the Kecksburg object are very similar. What's uh, that? I'm not familiar with that. Well, that's that's something that happened in, in Nazi Germany. Um, supposedly, this bell shaped, acorn shaped object disappeared. In Nazi Germany, they they created it. It took off, disappeared, and it was uh, it came it landed. I can't remember how many years later in Kecksburg, it crashed, and the body of the pilot was not there, but that ship was there. Wow. It just reappeared and smashed into the ground. Or several years later, too. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, and for if the I people, had my notes, I could tell you. I, I'm just kind of going from what I remember of it. Just wing I, it, man. Yeah. Just wing it. <laughs> hey, nobody's here to tell us we're wrong. For the people that were wondering, though, they put a pl- uh, patent for a plasma compression fusion device. It was either a giant breakthrough or mad science, according to the patent application. The miniature device could contain a sustained fusion reactions capable of generating power in the gigawatt one billion watts to terawatt one trillion watts range or more a large coal plant or mid-sized nuclear power reactor by compression produces energy in the one to two gigawatt wow so that was one device yeah Uh, you know and you know if and it goes back like i said if stuff like this wasn't possible why would the government waste money on it? Now, I know that the government wastes money, but you got people like Elon Musk with SpaceX. Mm-hmm. If, you know, stuff, I I think he could have some inside info. And if it wasn't possible, why would he spend money on it? Uh, Robert Bigelow, that owned Skimwalker Ranch. Uh, what was it? Uh, Bigelow. European uh, Gigolo? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bigelow Aer- Aerospace. Yeah. Uh, Bigelow uh, Aerospace. You know, he's multi-billionaire. Why would he spend money on these projects if yeah. 
there wasn't something there. See, I, I want Elon to become president because I think that he'll be the one to tell us, like, what's out you there. So? That's what bothered me. Like, that's why I was so disappointed in Trump, man. I thought, like, on he his last day, us. I thought he was going to well, go for it. You know, I was like, man, he's going to be the one. Finally, we got somebody in there that's crazy enough to do it. And nothing, nothing. Well, well but, I mean, maybe. <sighs> he, he could still blurt stuff out. Maybe, and I, and I hope he does. God, I hope he does. If... if <sighs> That's how that's how he'll win next time around. Just tell us that they're aliens, aliens man. Yeah. I was definitely wrong about the Philadelphia experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, I, I got the two confused. So I was talking about the Kecksburg object. The Philadelphia experiment. Yes, I, I do believe that that was that because there was some time travel to that because um, it reappeared just a few minutes later, didn't it? Like yeah. twenty minutes. Yeah, later. and it was but, in a different spot too. Yeah, and and there were like the ship was. Like there was a green haze or something in the mm-hmm. ship or around the ship or something like that, and like people were mutilated inside of it. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah it, was it was crazy. But and see, that's why I think uh, that you have <clears throat> the Pentagon coming out and releasing those three videos because somehow they got leaked. I think it was in 2007 and 2017 or something like yeah. that. So nowadays, with technology and social media and the internet, it's going to be a lot easier for stuff to slip through the cracks if we would have had cell phones back in uh whenever that happened the philadelphia experiment who knows what we would have got from that exactly and and it's just and it's weird though they've been messing around with it all the way back to the beginning of the 1900s uh some of those other patents though before we uh, move on was electromagnetic field generator I'm way too dumb to understand any of this (laughs) so I'm not going to dive into it other people can do it Uh, another one was Inertial mass reduction device, high temperature superconductor, high frequency gravitational wave generator. What is that? Like, it I, I don't like, even. It sounds like everything you would need to make an aircraft or a spacecraft. Spacecraft make uh, make high high angle or intensely quick angled turns. <laughs> Very fast. Well, well, wasn't one of the uh, videos that they released last year? Wasn't it? Or am I thinking about a different one? There's some type of army, army general that came out and talked about it. With some, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It wasn't a plane. Some type of aerial craft was hovering above the ocean at like 5,000 feet or something like that and dropped down to like a foot above sea level like that, like yeah. just almost yeah. instantly. And it was still on the radar. They still knew it was there, and it was still there just hovering. But it was like in the blink of an eye, goes from 5,000 feet to one foot above the ocean. What is that? You know, that's I, if we have technology like that nowadays, that's crazy. And I can see how somebody thinks that that's some type of otherworldly thing. You Who know, knows? too. And you can go, uh, you can uh, search uh, Gary McKinnon uh, hack, and he hacked the uh, NASA computers shortly after uh, 9/11, and he claims that he saw a list of. Uh, pilots that were qualified to fly, in his words, a man-made UFO. i seen that. Uh, But, man, why didn't that guy take any pictures or, like... Well, from from some of the research that you do, he's, you know, he was kind of like the Rain Man movie. Yeah. You know. I just, like, man, if I'm hacking into NASA... I'm getting some proof. Like I well, want, like, and I, I, I want, like, I want people to believe me. You, would you know, think. I I can't think of what it is off the top of my head, but he made a claim on something that he saw back in 2001 that came true a few years later. But I can't think of what it was. Yeah. But you know, that's 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 very interesting. You know? yeah, and, and I think though, like I said earlier, with the technology, and especially cell phones, that we will see more. Instances oh, yeah. like that come about, and like some actual facts about it. Um, uh, his name is Judas. Now I forgot about that. Gearheart Radio, <laughs> Jesus, Judas. He said, uh, "Ask them what they think about the incident at C E R N that happened a few years ago." Oh, at CERN. CERN, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I am. A, uh, I am uh, aware of that. I have done a little research on it. Uh, I'm I'm not, not, I've never heard of it. Yeah. What is, yeah. What is this? Uh, that's for the. Like make the the god particles or so forth. Uh, and all that, yeah. It's and a large hydron. Collider. Yeah, the, the they. Oh, where they're like smashing the atoms. Atoms, together. And, and they claim that they made a black hole, or they knew how to make a black hole. I I think that's what he's referring to. I don't know uh, a lot about that. 
Okay. Yeah. See, uh, I whenever uh, I went down to the Hubble exhibit there at the uh, East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium, they talked about it a little bit. Uh, Steve Russo, big shout out to him. Y'all would love him. Uh, he actually got to walk inside that uh, reactor one time before it was open. Really? He has, has some pretty cool stories about it. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if there's people smart enough out there to figure out stuff like that, who knows what they can pull off with an aerial craft? It's just the whole jump of technology and education. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if it's just past information that really secret societies just had and we got the technology to be able to recreate it or if they were aliens, who knows? I mean, nothing is out of the out of the realm of possibility for me anymore. No, That's how no, weird this and, life it's, is. and it's not us either. Mm-hmm. I think some of our technology has been given to us. I think we have uh, reverse engineered it. Yes. We've taken it, whatever we've had to do. I mean, we, we've not always been the most polite country, <laughs> nor, nor is anybody in this planet. You know what I mean? I well, mean, speak for well, yourself. I'm pretty polite. Well, well, that, well, that was like one of my things too. Like, useless. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know why they would be interested in us if they're if they're if somebody is visiting us. I don't know why they would. Well, you know, maybe it's like it's like going to Nebraska. Why would you want to go to Nebraska? You well, know, like that's, that's that's like yeah. Well, think about it this way. So you go on a lar- you go on a, l- a road trip. All right, you leave you leave here, and let's say you're going through Nebraska. What's the one thing that you need to drive and sustain yourself the whole way? Fuel. You need resources. You need yeah. fuel. You need water. You need food. If you're in the cosmos on you a long, need a restroom to take yeah. a potty break. If you're in, if you're in the cosmos doing a large road, we're Seven Eleven to these people, things whatever they are. Yeah. You know, and supposedly there was what the uh, the the agreement assi- or signed saying that they would we they would give us technology if we would give them people. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like an old document that somebody uncovered. But, Back during FDR's but I think that's presidency. why you see a lot of UFOs around water because you need the resources. Assuming that all life forms in the planet or in the galaxy need water, yeah. food, you know, everything like that. But you would need that to survive and to make your journey, make your trip. See, the whole uh, water thing kind of makes sense to me as well because if you were wanting to hide on a planet, That'd be the best place. I mean, water, we, we've yeah. explored more of the moon than we have our own oceans. Yes. I think we've only explored less than 10% of More the entire ocean. ocean. So, yeah, you've got plenty of places to hide down there if that's where you're wanting to do it. And in, a, and in an advanced civilization like you were talking about, ancient advanced civilization could still be underwater. Technically, you know what I mean? That could be what we see coming out of the water occasionally. Hmm. Well, to me, see, uh, that's what I was trying to say earlier. That would almost explain many religions to me because it's all talking about somebody coming from the heavens and coming down and giving people information, the ways to live, education, so on and so forth. But thousands of years ago, we didn't know how to interpret it. Uh, In the Bible, they say that God came down from the heavens on a chariot made of fire. To me, that sounds like a spaceship. But with our dumb minds, two, three thousand years ago, however long it was, we didn't know what else that was. We didn't know anything more than a chariot. We didn't know an engine was possible. So, of course, that's what we would call it <clears throat> is a chariot made of fire. And also, uh, there's an old ancient Indian book that I cannot remember the name of. Y'all may remember it, uh, where they talk about an ancient like sky battle where aerial craft are battling yeah. uh, with one another. We mentioned that briefly on the show Did way, we? way back. Yeah, oh, I, don't, I, I can't think of the yeah, name my, of my, it either. My mind is blank on that one. That's why I love Google. <laughs> Google's a great friend. Absolutely. Yeah. but uh, And, of course, it don't co- – see, I think that for the people that uh, – uh, well, they, they don't know this before air, but we kind of had a problem getting on air this morning, <laughs> and it may be somebody trying to block out the uh, all the inf- all the information. Okay, it's here here's something. Yeah, Vimana Vimana are mythical flying palaces and chariots described in Hindu texts and Sanskrit epics. Yeah, the Pushpaka Vimana 
of the king of Ravanon, who took it from the Lord, Kubera, this sounds like aliens right here, is the most quoted example of Viyama. So, I mean, yeah, you have all these ancient texts that are, uh, okay, thank God for <laughs> for Alex downstairs. <laughs> He's, thank you, Alex. He downstairs. is a lifesaver. Here it is. Okay. Oh, God. Kur, Kur, I'm going to butcher this. Kurukshitara? Kurukshitara. Kushitara? Is that how you say it? I don't know, man. That I'm sounds just, pretty I'm good. Just that, that sounds word. pretty good. But I mean, yeah, that, that, that's that's an actual thing. And I forget how many, uh, I think it's like 10,000 years old that that book is yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Far older than the Bible, actually. I don't so, think we've done a segment on that, but we mentioned something briefly. It might have been a listener email. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and it wasn't Stephen. So, who? Yeah. Stephen. It wasn't an email from Stephen. We posted our midweek show earlier this oh. morning, and we had a listener from Great Britain that wrote like a entire page. It was a novel, and oh, he read it. And uh, so, if you guys get a chance, you know, check that out. But but uh, but, but it's just I weird. Remember, I didn't remember that. It was just <laughs> six o'clock this morning, man. But 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 it, but it's weird though that like you know we see UFOs nowadays, and we don't we like to think that it's a recent thing, but. If you go through time and study ancient scripture and ancient cultures, 10,000 years ago, they were talking about seeing flying craft yeah. in the air. And like I was saying earlier about how it, how are possibly genetically altered mutations. I could see us doing something like that. I mean, like, we're kind of a messed up place. We, we, we like to uh, mess with stuff for entertainment. And True. somebody could be doing that same thing to us. Do you think, okay, here's a, one Some one of my friends uh, was telling me about this the other day and kind of blew my mind with it because I never thought about it this way. Do you think if we are visited by otherworldly beings, do you think that they are actual real beings or that it's just robots technically kind of sent and somebody's... Bird drones, you mean? Yeah, like, like um, yeah, basically like a oh, bird drone. I believe that. <laughs> I believe that. You believe that. <laughs> but I, I like know. a like a person drone that can fly a ship and all that, and they just <laughs> are in galaxy whatever, looking on an iPad and can see everything that this robot alien thing. Th is that seeing. is a that is yeah. a good theory. I've never heard that. that I'll, I'm, yeah, I think I'll look that up and see if there's anybody who's maybe <laughs> looked into that. Because I I just don't know if the whole little green men thing. Well, holds you know, up. And, uh, and, and I think that you were there Sunday in the segment when I said this. I think if we have a visitor or, you know, I mean, if the government does uh, disclose and they have video or pictures, I think that their body, the aliens, will be fit to their planet. You know, like mm -hmm. if we bre we breathe oxygen, if they breathe CO2, their, you know, facial features would be a little bit different. But I do think there would be similarities there. Hmm. See, and uh, that was one thing that <clears throat> my buddy was talking about. A lot of these sightings of these little green men or the gray people, however people look at them, it, they all look the same. There's no yeah. visible sex organs or anything, uh, big head, small body. And also, like, just the human evolution. That's where we're kind of going. You know, the they humans are described you, big head, small body. But it describes mm -hmm. everybody. I mean, like... Yeah. <laughs> Are you blind? <laughs> but it, it really does describe everybody. If you look just through human evolution, like we're a lot smaller than we've ever been before. Our heads Speak are growing. For yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, it's uh, j just the whole. I guess the normal human it is the yeah, average size of, a, of an adult. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I get exactly. what yeah. And you know, you're you're exactly right. I mean, there it's starting to go. I'm what the pinky toes are getting smaller, and the what? the pink your pinky toes uh, people's pinky toes are getting smaller. Yeah. Their evolution's going to eventually you're going to have four toes on your feet, and who knows? You know, <laughs> see, you, you may only have four fingers. I don't know. What if it happened from Mars to Earth? Because they knew that there was they they seen the asteroid coming before. Because there is an atmosphere on Mars. Yeah, there are still traces of oxygen and everything that you need to breathe here. Um, it's possible. I mean, yeah. it's possible that. The we were we started life on Mars. We came here. Mars got destroyed. Our civilizations got destroyed, and now we're starting to go back. Maybe it's just a cycle. I don't know. Who knows? And, and you know that would make sense because we are destroying this planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and, and it's inevitable. I don't think that 
unfortunately, if you're a tree hugger out there, I wouldn't. He I, is. I, 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 I would. I, I, listen, I'm I'm all for the environment, but I think that it's not exactly our destiny. I just think it's our inevitable doom as a human race that we will one day eventually destroy this planet. And we got to move on to the next one. So, to me, a theory like that would kind of make sense. Everything, everything that we need to survive as as humans, we take from the planet. We destroy the resources. You're right. I mean, eventually, in order for the human race to exist, we have to move from this planet. Yeah. To continue wherever we have to go away from here. Exactly. And then eventually, we'll have to go away from there, and mm-hmm. then away from if the human race is to continue to to exist. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, what if whenever it comes to these ancient books, the first people that were here on Earth, what if just the mission went bad, the rocket was destroyed, and basically it's had to start from scratch? You know, almost like a Stone Age type deal. I mean, if, if the world was to end today, catastrophic event, we're the only three people left alive. I don't, I, I don't know how to make this. I don't know how to no. make a microphone. I don't know what's in this. It would be... Back to alien technology, you have to rely on normal instincts, and then you'd have to wait another few hundred thousand years or however long it's been to catch but up to that. Around, yeah. yeah, have to catch some fish out of that nasty looking river out back, exactly. <laughs> and, and who knows, man, why are you going to catch fish right now? Why wouldn't you just go out and go to like McDonald's, even though we're the last three people here, they still have food in there for a while we could we could go yeah, ahead but for like for like a day until that stuff goes bad because yeah. there's no power I, mcdonald's stuff yeah. don't go bad oh that's I, true <laughs> yeah that is true <laughs> how, do you, how do you know there's no power he didn't say that there could be power if there well, was going to be any power though. if there's power then why are we even having this conversation about microphones not working and phones not working oh. and stuff like that <laughs> <sighs> What, what if, like... you like, got to think ahead, Goose. What if they're just messing with us, too? Like, going back to the whole entertainment thing, like, how the one spacecraft is rotating. Like, what if, like, whenever the pilot's like, oh, look at it, it's rotating, and the aliens are on different galaxy, like, oh, they're freaking out about rotating. <laughs> rotate again, rotate. <laughs> ah. Like, what if it's, like, just... like, what you, if, like, like practical jokers. Yeah, like, what, yeah, exactly. What if, like, their visitations are their version of impractical jokers <laughs> or punked or something like that? It could very well be. They're right Who now, knows? They're right now listening to us. Who like, listen to these three turds talk about us? <laughs> Do you think that there are government officials that are aliens? Yes. No. What makes you... Oh, okay. Oh, I like this. What What makes y'all... Oh, I want to hear both sets. You can go first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, please tell me why well, Why our government is not alien. Go ahead. No, no. He didn't say our government. He said government officials. Well, okay. people in the government. Yeah, that's, what, that's government. what that means. Right. Yeah. Duh. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> well, I don't know. You, you don't see any of our officials that are green or have antennas coming out of the top of their head, do you? Yeah, but they're but why they could be shape shifting. Why would why wouldn't you put a mask on? You, you rob a bank, That's you go the to reason. A, you wear a mask. That's the reason, dude. It's COVID. Everybody's wearing masks. <laughs> Hopefully, the aliens are social distancing. You're ridiculous. You know that. <laughs> why? Do, why do you think there is a uh, an alien species? Nancy Pelosi. She looks like an alien. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> AOC looks yeah. like an alien. <laughs> they, man, they all look like aliens. I they, mean, they really do. Like they, they look very strange. And there's, um, who was the guy? Um, we we talked about him not long ago. Um, the um, not Snowden, the other guy that blew the whistle. Uh, McKinnon. Yeah, he kind of looks like an alien a little bit. It looks like it looks like a gray, to be honest. A little bit. I mean. See, to me, that would almost make sense because the old the, the old saying, hiding in plain sight. Yeah. I think anything's possible. I think if you're going to, I think if you want to, if you are using a, a planet for a gas, we'll call ourselves the, the 7-Eleven of the stars. Uh, if you are going to use that for that and you, you want to block out your your existence or, or try to, you're going to try to infiltrate the government to see one what what they know about you, two what their defenses are, and three to try to run run block on on everything, try to manipulate the government so to speak. And if you've been here for 60, 70 years, you can work your way into that. If they got technology to travel 
millions okay. of light years. They've got technology to fake our faces. Well, yes, yeah, well, like but, we can do deep fakes <laughs> nowadays with yeah. computers. But why would they go to all that trouble? Why wouldn't they just talk to some of the government officials and be like, hey, we're real. Here's what the deal is. You know, we're going to give you some technology. We're going to go out and um, steal some of your cattle. Of some well, of your who, people, who says that, that didn't happen? Who says that? Who says that that's not part of the deal? It's like we're in this together now. Okay. We're, we're part of the right. government. All right, so we're we're getting real here. If there was honestly, and this is just my opinion, I'm going to have to stand up and, and look at you face and, to face and, because I can't and, believe that you're getting ready to and, take the. And uh, why are you putting your chair away? What are you getting ready to throw down? I feel like I'm getting, getting ready. To, I feel like I'm getting, getting ready to, to tell down? you a thing or two. Okay. right here. No, all Don't right. Talk, no one fix the camera. Okay. <laughs> No, uh, but if there was an alien or aliens in our government, do you not think that we would be better, like technology? I no. mean, food. I mean, we we would be better than what we are now. No, and here's why. Why? Because why would you want to create better technology and better food if you're fattening up the livestock? Well, oh my God, the, the cow Here, thing I'm never made any sense to me. This book on how to cook humans, you know. Who knows what these things eat? Oh my gosh! And also, birds are drone. Also, yeah, you exactly think that. <laughs> uh, also, by the way, go back and listen to our shows. You'll see that Ned and this Jack leg believes it's that. It's not me. Listen, it's not me. Also, what are we talking about? Government. Aliens See, and things. <laughs> what are we talking about? See, well, to to me, it makes sense that our Short-term government could loss. be. That's that 420. Yeah. Is that? A, <laughs> but uh, but it, I, see, I think that uh, it would make sense. I mean, you would be hiding in plain sight, and also, man, our government that are there is some dirty like there's some stuff going on there sometimes. It I, seems I, like like the Bohemian Grove, for mm-hmm. example. It's a great combination of some really secret stuff going on by high ranking worldwide government officials, actors, just the media, people that control everything. They do meet behind closed doors. Yes. So, I mean, who knows what they're plotting there? I mean, I, I do believe that – I'm not saying that all of our all of our government uh, representatives are, are aliens, but I do believe that there is some form of alien intervention into our government. I do believe that. No. I no, can, no, no. You, you've, no. You've, you've already stated your point. I can give it's a not thumbs possible. up on that. It's not possible. Birds or drones. I got you. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we, yeah. well, we make deals with countries all the time, you yeah. know, like working together, even some that we uh, don't agree with or want to put it out to the public that we don't agree with. Right. But really, we're making deals behind closed doors. Good example is uh, Pablo Escobar, CIA. Yeah. People <laughs> look into that. Yeah, our government's really nice people. But uh, who's to say that some stuff like that isn't going on with other beings from other galaxies? Definitely. Who knows? Definitely. I just don't get the whole, like, the whole cattle thing. I don't understand that. Like, wasn't it at Skinwalker Ranch that they found that one cow that, like, it's the way that it was butchered was almost doctor-like yeah. Yeah, how it was, good it was. Very surgical and there was no blood. Yeah. No blood at all. So and and that that that's really that was Nancy weird. Pelosi that did that. She's <laughs> well, I, see, that, that's one that Bird could be. An Why don't you be serious for a minute? We're having a conversation here. <laughs> Just chill serious. out. Why don't you go play with a coloring book over there? Nobody, <laughs> nobody takes this show serious as it is. <laughs> but I mean, really, who's to say? Because that to me would make sense. That if you were a being visiting this galaxy, make a deal. You know, like, hey, we exist. Uh, I don't know exactly what they want out of us i don't i don't think it's cattle to no. me that don't make sense well, i don't know what it could up. be Did you hear what well the said? cattle the cattle does make sense to a, to a certain degree if you think about it if, if if we're missing people and cattle that's the things that we we really watch you know livestock things like that we don't really watch what deer and bear and all that are, are taken away i mean it could just be figuring out what this planet has on it you know things like that could be that too and it could be resources as well i mean like how we uh go to uh, some countries for oil and stuff like that or how we dig some places for coal places like that i mean the resource i don't know what resources we have that they could want but who I knows st- i still believe it's water and oxygen and and r- the resources that you need for life i still believe that 
Could be. Or what if they are just, they could be like also like integrating our DNA and like fusing with us as well. And what if technology is kind of a wormhole into that world? Have you heard about the Neuralink stuff that's going on? Uh, it's a little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's weird. And they're going to be starting it this year. See, I think that eventually uh, humans will basically be cyborgs. And whenever it comes to that level of intelligence that we reach at that time, who knows what we'll be able to accomplish. I'm not ready to talk about it or anything, but I've been researching some simulation theories <laughs> Uh, we'll, well, thanks for bringing it up and we'll, not going to talk we'll ta- about it. We'll talk about it on the show. Relax, <laughs> goose. <laughs> well, the, the whole, okay. Here, I bought you breakfast. You can't eat it. Just you know what? It. Then fine. Forget what, it. What, Cut what, that out. <laughs> what, what, well, just to mention like the whole simulation thing, that would almost make sense too because we're living in a world of simulations right yeah. now. And, and if... Uh, if there is a society out there far more advanced, possibly hundreds of thousands of years more advanced as we are, their entire life would be a simulation, you would think. I don't know if there's anything real to well, it. Well, going back to, I'm sure you watched the movie Matrix and mm-hmm. how we're all batteries and all that, but the human body does put out so much electricity. I don't, I can't remember what it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, if that if if we keep going the way we're going, like you're talking about the Neuralink stuff and be cyborgs and things like that, and we all upload our consciousness, so to speak, to basically live in a simulation. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's very possible that we're heading that direction, or we're already there. Well, whenever you like, because there's certain ways to open up people's minds. Uh, there's certain drugs out there that will do it. Certain psychedelic drugs, and to me, it. <sighs> I don't know how much fact there is to some experience that those people say that they have on those substances, but it makes you think that there's a part of our brain that's there that we're not using all the time. So if I I forget how much of our brain that we're able to use, it's like what? It's less than 10%. Something like that. So if this Neuralink device that Elon is talking about opens up that extra 91%, who knows what we're able to see? I think energy is a real thing. We're able to prove that at this point. We mm-hmm. can't see it. Gravity is a real thing. We can't see it. There's all these types of forces in the universe. Who knows? I mean, like I said, anything's possible at this point. I don't put anything out of the realm of possibility. Well, if you could pick to know everything the government knows about UFO conspiracies or time travel, which one would you pick? UFOs. Because to <clears throat> excuse me, to me, UFOs make more sense than time travel at this point. I think that time I'm not smart enough to know if it's possible, but if people worked on it as much as they were, well, and still are today, for that long, there has to be something there. The whole bending space and time, we've all that they're, they're already looking into that. So, I, I just don't think that that's going to be something. I think that we would know that aliens are real before we're able to time travel. I can see that being factual to me. That makes sense, but who knows? Who knows? We could be time traveling right now, the whole Bearstein Bears thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or we're uh. About that. Just Nelson Man, uh, the whole Mandela effect, the whole Nelson Mandela thing that it was based off of. Mm-hmm. Who knows? And w- with the whole deja vu thing, that's another weird thing. There's still a lot of things in this world that we are not able to explain. And I, that's a good way to explain it. Who knows? <clears throat> what do you, ha- have y'all looked into stuff like uh, Bohemian Grove? I have not. I have not. I, I know briefly what it is. I have read over it, but I've not researched it any. Ah, we'll save that for next time. Okay. I, 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 I know it's, it's getting a little bit late. I know y'all boys have to go, but we haven't figured out anything. <laughs> but we had fun. We, yes, we had fun. Did. And uh, for one last time, Here to Chew Bubblegum is coming to WXLR. Tell everybody what they can expect, what day, what time. March 21st. 10 p.m.
and we are going to blow your minds with things. Boom. In our first episode, we're going to talk about some Kentucky-related <laughs> UFOs. Uh, we'll put out some questions to the audience and tell them how they can respond to those mm-hmm. questions. Um, like, And we, we will even have an Art Bell tribute show uh, cool. that we're going to be doing, like, the three or four shows later. Nice. It's it's really exciting. We're 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 looking forward to it, and uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be a good time, and I hope that uh, the listeners really enjoy it. There you go, folks. Well, Goose Cronkite, thanks again, y'all. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks you. Thanks you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all next week, folks. <laughs> Boom. There we go, man. That was deep. <laughs>